You want to learn how to make 1 million silver lines within one day of playing War Thunder? Well, stick around and I'm going to show you how. What we're going to do is we're going to make our way to our inventory. We're going to find this wager called Thunderer Wager. And all we have to do is destroy a bunch of AI ground targets. Now, there's various different ways you can complete the wager. If you want to learn how, hover your mouse over the things I'm hovering my mouse over on screen. But I recommend doing Thunderer, Antimech, Tsunami, or rogue wave these are just the easiest and can be completed really fast with zero reliance on your teammates or winning a match the aircraft that i personally use for this wager is the f-84b and the b-57b however you can pretty much use anything that you think you'll be able to re reliably and consistently destroy more ai ground units than anybody else in your lobby i personally pick these two aircraft because they get air spawns now the b-57b is a bomber so it starts at 4,000 meters but it is not as survivable as the F-84. So personally, I think the F-84B is better for this, but it does take a little bit more skill at the game to be able to do. So, I mean, it's just an option for every type of player. If you can't reliably defend yourself or get kills in dogfights or just killing other players in ARB, I'd rather recommend something like a bomber with an air spawn, uh, a jet bomber with an air spawn. B-57B uh, works just perfectly fine especially because it has 3,000 50 caliber machine gun rounds maybe it's 3,000 I guess it's 2,400 never mind it's still a shitload of 50 caliber ammo and for these anti-aircraft trucks and armored cars or artillery cannons all these random AI you're gonna be shooting at 50 cals are still gonna pretty much one burst all of them now you can see I've pretty much done absolutely nothing this game and I'm pretty pissed off about it you see me raging in chat right now because I just got killed by an anti-aircraft truck in the middle of the map. Very frustrating, but oddly enough, I did actually complete the wager, or at least the stage of the wager. You have to complete 10 stages to get 500,000 silver lines. So basically you complete any of those challenges that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. I specifically try to go for the one that says destroy 18 AI uh, ground targets. Or I go for the one that says you have to have the most number of kills, AI ground kills in a match, but it can't be any more than 17 because those are just really simple. If there are boats in your game, then I'll go for the boats too because nobody else goes for ships. And that first clip is a testament to just how easy and independent this wager really is. I'm not relying on my teammates to win any games. I'm not even relying on myself to be good at the game. I'm simply flying around and shooting bots. If you use just a little bit of strategy while doing this, you're going to make it to stage 10 very, very quickly. On top of that, you have six tries to do it. So if you don't do any of those challenges listed in that wager, that's going to give you an advancement into the next stage. Well, no big deal. You still have five more tries to be able to do it. Versus many of the wagers, they'll give you maybe three tries. This one doubles that and makes it very, very easy. So take the 500,000 silver lines that you're inevitably going to be getting by completing this wager and then also add all of the silver lines you're going to be getting just from playing the matches trying to get that 500k and it can very very easily turn into 1 million silver lines from those 10 games. And again one of the great things about this wager in particular is it's pretty independent. You're not relying on anybody and you can get in and get out of games very quickly because of that. I had previously made a video about the victory wager where I used the Sagittario, which was an absolute winning machine at the time, and I was making 500,000 silver lines with ease just by winning matches. Well, the problem with that is it relies on winning matches, and therefore you need to be staying in the match as long as you possibly can to ensure that you do actually win. This one, on the other hand, you just have to start destroying your targets, and if you die within maybe two or three minutes, it's perfectly fine. As long as you've destroyed your AI targets, you can advance into the next match and just grind out the wager quicker than the other ones. I'd say it's perfectly reasonable to get this wager done and over with within about two hours. And if you're an absolute mad lad at destroying ground targets, you could probably even do it within an hour and a half just because you don't have to be staying in the games from start to finish, like I said. Now, if you're brand new to the game and you don't have a stockpile of wagers that you never use, like probably most War Thunder players out there, this method is not going to be perfect for you. However, if you do find yourself coming across a Thunder or wager, use this method. It'll get you a lot of silver lines. And also, on top of that, make your way to the Warbond shop 
and see if you can't unlock a bundle of wagers there and hopefully a couple of those will be Thunder wagers. So the B57B is great and all, but personally I like using the F84 to do this just because I can defend myself a little bit easier and that way I can ensure that I actually am completing the stages. I picked out my targets, it's typically a convoy of vehicles at the very start because it's just free kills. They're all in a nice single file, single file line, very easy to shoot. And after I've killed all of the light armored vehicles in the convoy, I typically will transition into the anti-aircraft and artillery batteries, just kind of placed anywhere around the map. There are light pillboxes, of course, that you can shoot at two with 50 cals and effectively destroy them. However, I would caution away from this method because light pillboxes take significantly more ammo to destroy, regardless of what caliber you're using, but specifically 50 cals take a lot of ammo to destroy what light pillboxes so i just stick to the unarmored or lightly armored ai targets that you can shoot at and that way you can pretty much one burst everything available now i noticed on this particular map there is a plethora of enemy team members just kind of camping around their airfield i'm not sure why exactly they're just sitting over there but I was more than happy to see it it's just buying me plenty of more time to be shooting at these ai ground targets and it's going to effectively help me complete my wager sooner in the match and therefore I would be able to, in theory, get out of this match and jump into another one to complete the overall wager in a shorter time period. It's not exactly what ends up happening, but I could have. Instead, I do actually try to win the game. The enemy fighters start making their way toward my position, so I have no choice but to kind of take the fight to them. You know, sometimes the best defense is a good offense, sometimes the best offense is a good defense, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. And I'm basically just going to run away at this point. I put some distance between me and them by flying head on. They've had to make full 180 turns to be able to turn around and shoot at me, and therefore they've bled a lot of energy, so I'm just going to fly away. The F-84B is pretty much the fastest jet at the battle rating unless you get up tiered and you'll be able to outrun pretty much everything you're going to face which is perfect for this wager because if you don't get to kill all the AI targets by the time the enemy team gets to your position you can just run away and wait for another opportunity to strike them. That's exactly what you just saw me do there. At this point I'm kind of just assessing whether or not I need to make my way back into the fighter combat or if I'm able to start clearing out some of these AI. I opt to shoot at some more AI because I've just found the time and opportunity to do so. There's no one threatening me right now and I've pretty much got clear skies. So again, taking advantage of this free time to shoot these AI, I'm going for, like I said, 18 targets if necessary because the other one, which is 17 targets but no more than 17, it requires you to have the most AI kills in the game. So it is possible that somebody else might yoink that one from you. By getting more kills however if you get 18 or more then you you'll get it no matter what because then you earn the thunderer challenge or complete the thunderer challenge rather and that will advance you to the next stage in your wager regardless of what anybody else does in the match 229 completely tunnel vision on my teammate i'm able to score free kill off of him which is fine and dandy even though kills are irrelevant wins are irrelevant but I figured I'd at least try to help my team out here and win this match since I've been doing absolutely nothing of use the entire game. But <laughs> now that I have killed that 229, there's a couple planes on my 6, I'm simply going to run away from them and continue to shoot these light armored vehicles. Nothing can touch me at this battle rating. As long as you're not getting a full up tier, the F-84B can pretty much decide when it wants to fight. And that's the beauty of having top speed at these lower battle rating jet matches. At this point, I am again assessing if there's anybody in the immediate vicinity that's posing as a threat to me. And as much as it pains me as a dedicated air-to-air -air main, my job is not to be attacking fighters right now. As much as I really should be if I wanted to win the game, I am going for this wager to prove to you guys, or at least show you guys, how you can actually accomplish it and make a lot of silver lines by doing so. Again, it took all of the self-discipline and really self-control that I had not to just go shoot the, fir shoot the first fighter that I saw. So just because of that, if you guys could, go ahead and smash that like button down below. I would really appreciate it. Anyways, the last of the enemy team is kind of at my airfield, or at least on my side of the map, if you will. And that's pretty much where all my teammates are. So I want to try to help my team win since I've done absolutely nothing. There's a little bit of guilt hanging over me just because I've been useless in shooting at AI all game. So 
we're gonna go ahead and kind of go into fighter mode. We've already got a lot of AI and I'm like 98% confident that I'm gonna win based off of the fact that I've killed more AI than anybody else in this game alone. Even if I don't have the thunder challenge completed yet, which is 18 ground units, I know that I'm gonna have more than anybody else. And also, for the sake of this video not being entirely boring, let's get into some actual fighter gameplay. That ME262 that I critted in the head on, just I think he just gave up and threw his plane into the mountain. Not sure why there, but I mean it's gonna help me because now there's only about three enemy fighters left on the other team. It's kinda looking like that 262 and 229 wanna RTB. I don't know where the other guy is and I really don't even know what he is at this point in time and I'm not really worried about it. I'm just gonna go right back to shooting ground targets until I'm forced out of it otherwise, I think, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna just fly around here. The, the 229 starts coming back towards me, so of course I have to deal with him. I'm not gonna let him just blast me out of the sky while I'm tunnel visioned in on some AI. We get a little hit in the head on, and we're just gonna keep on flying away because if we make any other moves, then we're gonna be bleeding speed and not be the fastest plane anymore, which leaves us vulnerable to enemy gunfire. 262 loops around and does another 180 to come after us. No big deal. I know he's bled a lot of energy. I mean, energy he didn't even have in the first place. So we take it straight into a vertical. Simply is not going to be following that. Even if he had energy, he's not going to beat the F-84 in a vertical. I get a little confused up at this point. I'm kind of debating on what I want to do. Do I want to turn back away? Do I want to go for this 229? The 229 kind of looks like he's coming for me. You know what? Screw it. I'm just going to commit to this 229, see if I can't get some more 50 cal shots into him. He completely maneuvers out of my guns. I really couldn't follow that shot. He was just too tight of a turning radius, and if I committed to that any longer, I'd probably have a pretty hard time pulling up and out of it before I crashed into the side of that mountain. I think this gameplay right here demonstrates perfectly why I enjoy the F-84B so much, particularly for doing this challenge. It's kind of a bully on the battlefield, in the sense that Whatever it wants to fight, it'll go fight. Whatever you don't want to fight, you don't have to fight. It kind of can just kind of, it kind of can just kind of nice. Uh, it can kind of just pick its own engagements. And if you feel like you're in trouble or you feel like you're not going to beat something, whether it be in a turn fight or, you know, anything like that, you can simply just run away. And there's really nothing wrong with that. The many planes, the top speed is the entire strength of the plane. And that's exactly what it is for the F-84B. It bleeds energy super fast. It can turn for a couple turns, especially at high speed. But like I said, it bleeds energy really, really fast. And you're going to die very quickly in a sustained dogfight. So pretty much your big strength in the F-84 is your top speed and your dive speed, as well as your zoom climb capability. Now, I said it bleeds energy really fast, and it does, but if you're doing a zoom climb in the F-84 where you're not actually putting in any flight control input then it holds energy pretty well so let's say you just came straight out of a dive uh, classic boom and zoom you come out of a dive and you go straight back up into the sky you'll actually be able to exchange a good amount of that speed into a fair trade of altitude not exactly my favorite play style for jets however uh, for this particular ap application of shooting ground targets and bouncing between players, it works. Uh, side note, I do end up winning that game. We end up winning by tickets. I RTB shortly after that. And uh, it ended up being a Seahawk was the third player left. He ends up team killing the 262. And I don't know what becomes of the 229. We win by tickets is what I'm trying to say. On to the next map, another glorious map for this wager. There's just a whole bunch of M8 Greyhounds, I think these are called. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but a bunch of light tanks with wheels, and they're just free targets for 50 cal. So you can see me, I pop the air brake just so that I'm not flying across them way too fast, and I can't get my aim on target. I want to be able to shoot as many of these guys as I possibly could in one pass, that's why I slowed down. And now that I've shot all of them, I'm going to get the hell out of here before the rest of their team shows up. I used my air spawn to run straight to the middle of the map, shoot a bunch of AI, and I'm going to try to get the plane back up to speed. I did bleed a lot of speed shooting all of those AI, however I knew that I would be able to actually get in and get out before I was in any real danger. So we're just going to go ahead and kind of juke this F or SK-60 out. I wanted to make him scared but I really never had any intention of going for him. He wasn't hurting me, I'm not going to hurt him, we're just kind of both being equally useless shooting AI. So I'm just going to kind of circle back around here towards all of those tanks again 
and hopefully I'd be able to secure my 18th ground kill, which is going to guarantee an advancement to the next stage of the wager. I am kind of rushed out into the middle of the battlefield, my team's all behind me, and essentially I'm alone. If there are enemy planes that do want me dead, I am going to have a hell of a time defending myself from them. Just because of sheer numbers, you know, I could be getting jumped by two or three enemy planes at any moment now. Their airfield is closer to me than I am to my own airfield, if that tells you anything. There's an A-28 here, which I'm pretty sure is a Swedish vampire. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, I just think that's what it is. If we go head on, I notice his shots are coming in pretty fast, so I get out of that head on very, very early. Managed to get one hit into him. Check back on our 6 to make sure he's not pulling a 180 to chase us, because if he was, I wouldn't be able to be shooting these ground targets right now. And again, as painful as it is, that is my primary objective. For the sake of this video, only the sake of this video, you will never see me shooting ground targets again as my primary objective. Just going to do a little loop-de-loop -loop around here, make our way back towards all of those tanks, and do yet another strafing run. There's a meteor off to my left there but he's kind of far away. He's not too much of a threat yet, but he has something to keep an eye on. I opt for the loop just because that way you're kind of trading in the speed you have for altitude, and then by turning that altitude in on a dive, you're picking up speed, and you just get a lot more out of your plane that way. Flying really low to the ground here, and I have to point my nose really down to hit some of these shots, and it's making it kind of difficult because if I point my nose down too low, then I am just gonna throw my plane right into the dirt, so. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that strategy unless you're really confident with your flying abilities because I almost bit the dirt or bit the dust rather uh, several times throughout this match but hey that's okay I'm still shooting AI tanks and no just notice real quick how quickly these things are dying you do not have to expend a lot of 50 caliber ammo on them one burst from your guns and let's say you just hit all six of those shots they're gonna die so you really only have to tap the trigger once uh, Spitfire kind of diving down on me. I'm not really worried about him, but I really should be, and you're going to see why. He was over a kilometer away. I'm in a jet. I was going pretty damn fast, so I was thinking there's just no way he's going to catch me, even if I pull this vertical with the meteor. However, I'm going to learn very, very quickly by checking my six that I had heavily underestimated the capabilities of that Griffin. He is now well within shooting range of me, and I'm just lucky that he's not hitting these shots and evidently not too practiced with his Spanish, but that's okay. I'm not, I'm not dogging on him or anything like that. But I could have very easily died right there, so don't underestimate the super props in 7.0 jets or you will end up a dead man like I should have been right there. And that'd be very unfortunate because there's still plenty of AI ground targets that need a killing. There's nothing quite like flexing your competitive skill in War Thunder than shooting at the most competent, and high level AI targets in the game like you see in my gameplay here. In fact, just because I'm killing such high skilled AI, go ahead and drop a like on this video and subscribe. Okay, I'm done doing that for real, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty bored with this video if you haven't been able to tell. It's not interesting gameplay. If you've watched up to this point, I, I can't help but thank you. Uh, that's awesome. Very kind of you, but I hope you get the gist of what's going on here. I'm just bouncing between shooting players and AI and if you do that enough then you advance in the wager if you advance through the wager 10 times you get 500 silver lions by the time you've done that you've probably accumulated another 500 silver lions from the 10 games you've spent shooting ground targets so it is what it is uh, I'm gonna cut the video right here just because I'm bored the explanation really only required like three minutes of talking but I have a bunch of gameplay to show you as demonstrations of how to do it, so I tried my best to make it entertaining. Let me know if you're still awake in the comments down below. Uh, I end up flying this plane back to base, and uh, I end up jaying out and leaving the match because I had shot over 18 ground targets at this point, and I do go back and shoot a couple more with only one tail, or elevator, or I don't know what you call that. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video, I hope you learned something from the video. I hope you really, really get rich after watching this video on War Thunder, of course. But most importantly, I hope I'll see you in the next one. See ya.